strength of it. And if we are starting to see value investors coming back in, I mean, it's been talked about as almost the second coming. We've been hoping for it for so long. <laughs> It is. If we have a look at valuations, they're attractive. And I guess one of the reasons that a lot of investors stay on the sidelines, especially institutional investors, is that we're coming up to earnings season and not a lot of people willing to make a lot of big bets in terms of buying decisions before we get an insight into how that earnings season is going to play out. Of course, today we've seen a, a couple of reports out from the big energy uh, giants, so Woodside Petroleum, Santos on our market, coming out with some very bullish results. So giving us a better insight into what to expect from both Woodside and Santos and we saw a heap of buying going into both those stocks but the, 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 a session like, like this it doesn't get much better than this we saw a rise of two percent we saw a breaking of a key resistance level in fact if we have a look at the 30-day chart for the Australian share market this is what it looks like hmm. you can see that we've broken through that uh, resistance level at 4,175 points quite decisively and we've seen the best volumes for July so far so on a rising volume, volume really acts like an accelerator. Once you see a rise in volume, it just shows you the power of the move up. And we've just powered through that resistance level, which technically is a good sign. So we did probably see some short positions being closed out today because we saw quite a bullish technical indicator coming, uh, coming, uh, being broken on the market. Of course, those macro themes still around, but they are in the background. And I guess the amazing thing is that we've seen the Australian market rallying despite Spanish 10-year bond yields being around that 7% level. One of the things that will help support the Australian market over the next month is the fact that we've got dividend paying season coming up. In August we see big companies uh, like Telstra, Cochlear, CBA, uh, Westfield, Westfield Retail Trust all coming out to pay quite attractive dividends. So that's likely to support a lot of these stocks coming up to that dividend season. But a fantastic day on market today. Up 2% beating the US performance, breaking resistance and the best volumes that we've seen since July. Well spoke yesterday about the, I suppose Woodside being one of the preferred picks in that space, but just running through the numbers, Woodside up 7.5%, Santos up 5.8%, Beach up 7.3%, Oil Search up 4.6%, an incredible session for these energy guys. It was a fantastic session and I guess comparing the companies at very different stages in terms of their projects. One of the reasons why Woodside Petroleum came out with such a good result and upgraded its full year guidance is a flat fact that Pluto is up and running. We're going to see the same type of thing for Santos, but not till a couple of years. It sees the Papua New Guinea LNG project coming online in 2015, and then the Gladstone LNG project uh, in 2016. Most of its value derives from its Cooper Basin assets, and I guess the unconventional story could be quite an exciting one, but one that the market's not giving any value to in terms of the valuation of Santos. The Cooper Basin has sustained uh, its production for a number uh, more than a decade now and um, if we have a look at the possibility of unconventional it's just an extra option to that those Cooper Basin mm -hmm. assets that perhaps they could get some more life out of that asset but Woodside Petroleum really the star today it's great to see some good news coming around and a turnaround in that stock after all the project delays the cost blowouts that we've seen at Pluto we've seen production ahead of guidance and we've seen that full year guidance being being upgraded as well and bouncing off that mm. very important technical support level of $30 so convincingly up more than 7% today an excellent result yeah We're almost out of time but I wanted to get your thoughts on a story late today Etihad announcing that it got uh, FIRB approval to increase its stake to 10% uh, in Virgin now most focus quickly shifts to Qantas who have expressed some concern about this in the past there is concern because uh, Qantas is facing increased competition in a part of its business that is already struggling and that's the international business. And these alliances are very important because it makes uh, mm. sense on uneconomical routes. It means it gives Virgin uh, access to to different routes and a virtual, I guess, a virtual network without the capital expenditure. So now it's got alliances with Etihad, Air New Zealand has a 20% stake in uh, Virgin as well, Delta as well as Singapore Airlines. And I guess Qantas's concern stems from the fact that it's competing against some of these airlines which is state-based or state-backed um, which virtually has an unlimited amount of uh, capital at its disposal and it's hard to compete on that basis and that's why the international route is so difficult. Qantas itself has been cutting costs to London instead of uh, getting staff from Sydney to London and then having to uh, pay the accommodation costs. It's been uh, 
uh, flying the Sydney staff to Singapore and then a changeover as well so that it pays less in terms of costs and trying to reduce those costs to uh, London as well as the UK and of course this Etihad Alliance is all about uh, exposure to the Middle East as well as Europe for Virgin so a positive for Virgin Qantas still facing up pretty tough in terms of its international business. Yeah indeed look gotta leave it there guys